Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Gabriella. I make videos about fragrance, mental health, self-care, beauty, skincare, life as a touring actor, life in Los Angeles when I'm there, and whatever else I feel like talking about. I also do vlogs. So if that sounds like your jam, please stick around and subscribe. I would love to have you here. Today, as you can see by the title, we're gonna be talking about the perfumes that I currently have with me on tour, the perfumes that I've been wearing for the majority of the summer, uh, save for a few that I left at my parents' house when I left Chicago beginning of July, um, and what I think about all of them, and maybe, maybe what I'm thinking about for fall in terms of fragrance. But before we jump into that, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Ana Luisa. If you're not new to this channel, then you're not a stranger to Ana Luisa. They are a sustainable jewelry company that are completely carbon neutral. Uh, they offset 100% of their carbon emissions, and they have wonderful, beautiful pieces that I wear every single day. Pieces that I shower in, sweat in, swim in, and have never personally had an issue with them turning green, giving me allergic reactions. I have very, very, very sensitive skin. Um, and I love that my ears, my fingers do not get irritated when I wear Ana Luisa products. Their prices start at $39. They have sales going on all the time. And if you use my code, you can get 10% off your purchase. The code is Gabriella Francesca 10 and, uh, I'm a huge fan of Ana Luisa and I know many of you have already placed orders on the site and are really, really happy with the pieces that you have. So that makes me very happy. So shout out to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. I wanna showcase some of these pieces. These are my current faves, I think. Um, they're, I'm not one who wants to wear big heavy earrings on a daily basis or even hoops that might get caught. I'm kind of like an on the go athletic girl. So I have to, you know, I like to keep it close to my face in terms of earrings. But this is a little way that I can wear like drop fun earrings without them being heavy and annoying me and getting in my face and stuff like that. So these are really cool paper clip earrings that have pink pearls. And then I've combined them with this tiny, beautiful stud also from Ana Luisa. This is a necklace that kind of reminds me of handcuffs. But I also think of like love when I look at it. And I love where it sits. I just think it's so beautiful. Anyway, beautiful, delicate pieces. Also this ring I wear on a daily basis. I love chunky rings. I love them, because I have big hands. So Ana Luisa has, uh, a, a really amazing selection of chunky rings, so it's perfect for me. So again, Gabriella Francesca 10, linked down below if you wanna check out Ana Luisa, and uh, let's jump into this video. So, uh, I will start with proper perfumes. Let's start with Parfum de Marly. This is Atalia. This is an orange blossom fragrance. It also has iris. Uh, and I believe there is musk and amber in the base. So this is a beautiful, <laughs> I just, I love this. And you know, everybody on YouTube talks about Delina, which is cool. I don't know if I'm ever gonna purchase Delina because it just like became such a big thing. And also I don't really know if it's me. I would have to try the different versions and see. But Atalia is definitely up my alley. Uh, Orange Blossom is pretty much my favorite perfume note ever. And so anytime I see something with Orange Blossom, I have to get it. This is newer to me. I bought this, I believe, while I was in Chicago. I did a haul. And I'm really happy with this. The lasting power is amazing. Actually, the last time I wore this shirt, I wore this and I put it on and I can still smell it on the shirt. So it is... Um, very, very expensive smelling. It's quite mature. And surprisingly on nights out, even here in DC when it is so hot, I have really enjoyed wearing this uh, because it's not too woody. There's not oud in it. It doesn't feel heavy in the sense of cloying, uh, but it is quite a heavy fragrance in terms of like it smacks you in the face. <laughs> but it's powdery uh, because of that iris. The orange blossom to me doesn't stick out as orange blossom straight from a tree, but I'm still a huge fan of this and I feel really luxurious and beautiful 
and elegant when I wear this. Like, I wouldn't wear this to a bar or anything. This is, this is like queen vibes. I love this. This is probably my favorite, except for one, one thing that I'll show you, but probably my favorite uh, perfume of the summer, which is, it's kind of surprising I've been wearing this in the summer. Maybe some people would be like, you're crazy, but it works for me. Um, then we have another luxury perfume. This is Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. Famous, also beautiful bottle. And this is tough for me because I really like this fragrance and my uh, newsflash boyfriend uh, loves this fragrance. This gets a reaction from him every time I wear it. I have to be... The base of this fragrance, like the overall concept of this fragrance is delicious. Like the marshmallow, it's just fluffy cloud girly deliciousness. Then there is this layer over it that is almost peppery, powdery to the point where like it makes me want to sneeze. It gives me the desire to sneeze. So I have to be careful how much I wear this. I really need it, or how much I put on rather. I really need it to melt in with my skin. So I would do like one spray on my neck, one on my wrist, dab once, sorry, sue me, and then maybe once in my hair. But otherwise, I think how I would describe it, honestly, that, that powdery sneezy thing is like dry shampoo. Like the smell of a really nice dry shampoo, but you, you're getting that powdery kind of sneezy effect. I don't know. Let me know if you've ever had that experience. I really love this fragrance, but if it could be just a little bit more juicy or like, not juicy because not fruit, but like more wet and less of a, I don't know how many times I can say it. It just kind of makes me want to sneeze. But then when it's been on my body for a while, I really enjoy it. And like in DC, it rains all the time. Sometimes I wear this, it'll kind of fade. I don't find the lasting power to be incredible but then the rain will fall and it will reactivate my fragrance. That's one of my favorite things. So yeah, this is like, I have an interesting relationship with this because it's not that I dislike the smell, it's the, the effects, I don't know, it's touchy. But yeah, that the water reactivation thing was the way that I found out that Guerlain Insolence was like my favorite fragrance because I was at Disneyland, I tried it on because they said it was like exclusive or something. I still don't know what they meant by that. And I was like, God, I don't like this, ugh. How crazy, right? It's, it's heaven to me. And then I went on um, Splash Mountain a couple hours later, the fragrance, the fragrance was like reinvigorated and I was like, mmm, and actually that's the best thing I've ever smelled, so yeah. All right, uh, next. This is a fragrance that I feel a bit embarrassed of uh, how I pronounced it before, but how was I to know? It's kind of like, uh, I'm gonna admit something, it's kind of like when I thought five or six years ago that when in perfume descriptions it said there was a balsamic element, like balsam, I did think that meant balsamic vinegar. <laughs> Being human is goofy. Anyway, this is uh, Blue Ia. I was saying Oya, but it's Blue Ia. Vanille Muguet by La Maison de la Vanille. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Um, and I'm very excited because Ia, if I'm not mistaken, is a part, a place in Santorini. Um, and I will be in Santorini very, very soon. Uh, but this is Blue Ia. This is a, a vanilla Lily of the Valley fragrance. It is so gorgeous. I wore this when I played Sophie in Mamma Mia because it just felt, I just picked this one without knowing Ia was Greek. Uh, and then it ended up that this is inspired by the Greek islands, which is wild uh, because that's where Mamma Mia takes place. So I love this. The lasting power isn't incredible, uh, but I really, really don't care because it's, it's amazing. I love Lily of the Valley. I love the soapy element of it but sometimes wearing just Lily of the Valley feels a bit out of character for me because it's it's kind of young. It's, it's, um, it's funny to say, but Lily of the Valley smells virginal to me. It smells like uh, old school, you know, perfume water or something for 
for someone very young and sweet and I, I like a bit more, sorry, the AC just turned on. I hope that's not annoying. Um, I like a bit more warmth and a bit more sensuality to my fragrances. So vanilla, Lily of the Valley, perfect combo. Yeah, these two just tickle me. Another one, Ellie Saab, Essence Number no. 7, Neroli. This is tough because... I love this, but I also am not sure entirely that it's me. Now, would I get rid of it? No, because I like it. Is it a predictable Neroli fragrance? No. I love Neroli, but now I'm smelling Neroli fragrances everywhere and they kind of all smell the same. And I love the smell of Neroli, but I'm like, I might as well just wear Neroli oil. like. Where's the artfulness about blending a fragrance? But anyway, nothing wrong with keeping things simple, but this is a really cool take on Neroli. Um, it does have that, it's very mature. Uh, it does have that Chanel sort of DNA to it actually. Reminds me a bit of number five, Eau Première. It's less um, sort of biting and less bright and citrusy and kind of in your face. There is a sensuality to it, but it's uh, it's like Catherine Zeta-Jones sensuality, you know? So it's it's got a lower voice, it's darker, it's more mature, it's elegant, it has money, <laughs> it. Sorry, Catherine, you're not in it. Catherine Zeta-Jones is like my everything, but yeah, this is a bit of, actually, it's a similar vibe to this. This is more, I'm getting like boudoir, like this is velvet. This is velvet and this is like uh, a, a beach house, like a, a, a $15 million Malibu beach house where everything inside is like restoration hardware, crate and barrel, or West Elm and, and it's like light and there's a linen this and a white cloth sofa and a, a woven rug and it's just like Malibu multi-millionaire. Yeah, I think I might really enjoy this wearing it in California. I have to remember that my usual existence for the past seven years has been living in Southern California. So adjusting to being in a more conservative sort of preppy, less trendy place like DC. It's just different. The vibes change, the way that I dress changes. Like I would not wear this shirt just walking around DC. I'm wearing it to film because I really like it. I actually wore it for Tiny Desk the other day because the Six cast did a Tiny Desk concert, no big deal at NPR. But I would wear this in LA for sure. You know, differences. So I'm excited to see how I play with this when I'm in LA. Cause I think I'm gonna feel more comfortable with it. It is very good and the lasting power is really, really nice. Uh, especially for like a floral, amazing. And it's one of those that reactivates throughout the day and stays on your clothes. So I'm happy with it. I'm just navigating our special relationship. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Molecule 01 plus Iris by Eccentric Molecules. So this has ISO Super E, I believe it's called, which is a, syn a synthetic molecule that is categorized under like the cedar wood family, which a lot of people think smells like kind of pencil shavings. I was a little bit, if, if you saw in my haul and my, I think I did a first impressions, I was a little bit, concerned about how I was gonna make this work. I wasn't sure if it felt like me. Smelling it, I was like, is this kind of sterile actually? Well, when you look at the bottle, it does look very modern, uh, robotic, almost math, science-y, chemistry-esque, which is just all my worst subjects in school and just not who I am at all. So I was like, eh, but I love this. And I love Iris and it's not really a lipsticky iris, but it's also not too powdery. It's, there is a stickiness about this iris though, actually.
but I love this one. I want to smell clean, but, um, you know, unique. I like to wear this. This is a, this has been a very good DC scent. You just smell put together. Definitely. Like on days when I'm wearing, you know, minimal makeup, I got my slicked back ponytail or a bun. I'm feeling, you know, clean and I want to get my ish together. Like a day when I'm running errands or I want to be productive, this is it. You know, when I'm productive, I don't want to wear something like this where I'm like flirty and oh my God, I'm so, mm, I'm just uh, Alexis Rose. You know what I mean? That's not, I, this isn't Alexis Rose to me, but you know, I don't want to be like bouncing around, chit chatting, flirting here and there, texting. I want to be like, boom, let's get stuff done. And this is what I would wear. It's just no nonsense. Um, I like this a lot. I really am I'm enjoying this. Another perfume I've really, really been enjoying. And I mean, I made a significant dent in it for me. This is the Prada Rose Eau de Parfum. This has Neroli, uh, Mandarin, and Bulgarian and Turkish roses. And this bottle, first of all, is just beautiful to me. And this is a, this just takes me back to when I was, little I went to a summer camp with some friends and one of the days we we did a soap making activity and uh, I think that was probably the first time I really smelled rose in a concentrated amount and I remember that I made a rose soap and I loved it so much I also had a rose bubble bath from uh from Carson Peary Scott is that what it's called maybe no it was Carson Peary Scott Carson's Wow, that's why I love Rose because this smells like the bubble bath I had when I was seven and the soap that I made at summer camp. It's all unlocked. So if you are not new to my channel, you know that Rose and I were best friends. I mean, I was obsessed and then I went a bit too far and Rose and I needed some space and we took a couple years of space, I think, but I was ready to get back into Rose with this and this is the perfect re-entrance to rose because it is a rose proper it's not just a note i needed like she's not hiding she's here but it's watery it's fresh it's clean it's bubble bathy which i love and it is a wonderful fragrance it, it smells like water a bit to me like it really has that rose water scent emphasis on the water and on the rose and it just smells um it's so good for hot weather. It's amazing. And it's not, uh, if, if you associate rose with smelling old, which I don't, but some people do, I don't think you'll feel this way about this. I feel beautiful when I wear this. I feel delicate. Sometimes I do feel like me as a person, I'm a bit too, hey, wow, what's up to really embody this fragrance. But I don't think that's true. I think this is a part of my personality and it's soft and it's, receptive and in that sense very feminine and it's really but it's not quiet you know which i really like it's not a it's not weak it's not a weak fragrance it's not necessarily demure because there is the neroli adds a, a sort of biting there is a, a sort of biting citrusy aspect to this and you can smell it you know it's not it's not simple it's not um baby's first perfume it, so it's complex for a rose fragrance and it brightens me up. It's like kind of like a glass of orange juice for my senses. And I really have been loving this. And when I don't know what to wear, I've been wearing this. And I love it because I have pink hair. So if I can smell like a rose while I have pink hair, I just think that's kind of fun. Really into it. Uh, three body sprays, body mists, because I am shamelessly someone who wears those. I am part of the perfume community. I love fra uh, luxury fragrance, but I also am a sucker for Bath and Body Works because I'm a sucker for nostalgia. So uh, I brought Hibiscus Paradise, which, you know, I wish that I hadn't actually packed this. It's one of those things where I realize being in Chicago and, and uh, DC, there aren't palm trees here, so I don't want to reach for this. I, you know, this is California. This is maybe vacation in Hawaii. That might be a bit on the nose. Um, I've worn this in Palm Springs. I loved that. 
it just feels way, way, way out of character here. I wore it um, when I was working in Orange County last summer, that, but that's what it reminds me of. And I loved it. And I was going to the beach all the time and going to the pool. This is not, this is not it for where I've been this summer. So that's an important lesson to learn. Um, I love this fragrance though. It is so good. It's warm and it's like a it's like a nighttime tropical breeze. It is just so warm and so good. The notes are pink hibiscus, juicy guava, and sun-kissed coconut. It's like a tropical vacation, but it's not SPFE and the coconut is not too cheesy, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's just not, I haven't been reaching for it. It's not appropriate for my current situation. Uh, what I have been enjoying is a beachfront blanket also from bath and body works from their collection last summer this is fresh white linen summer sun rays and soft musk and i'm not a laundry scent type of person i'm not a clean really type of person not linen um but this does it right i mean people were saying it smells like dryer sheets i hesitate to say that i guess because that just cheapens it to me but i guess i can see it but yeah, you just smell clean, put together. This is kind of DC appropriate, uh, especially if you're going to like, you know, East Coast, a beach vacation. This is more East Coast. This is West Coast tropical vacation. This is, you know, I could wear this in South Carolina or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's classy. It's clean, it's yummy. I think there is coconut in there. I would go 99% to say. Uh, but I think when they say summer sun rays, they mean that because what does a sun ray smell like? So yeah, I really 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 like that fragrance. I'm gonna be sad when I run out of it Victoria's Secret Heavenly Summer. I'll go quick because this is limited edition. This is I Believe this is just bergamot and orris. I Think to me it smells like a really watery kind of orange blossom or neroli um, But if you know if it's watery bergamot that would make sense it's really good. This is classy. This is beautiful. Um, this reminds me of like, for some reason, Diane Kruger. To me, this smells like a wealthy blonde woman. And I still enjoy this. I'm not a wealthy blonde woman, but it, that's what it smells like. Or, or, it, or like I think of the 90s Victoria's Secret supermodels, especially the blonde ones. I don't know why. Maybe because summer, I think of like sun in and I think of highlights or something. I don't know. Yeah, like... A, a woman in her, I know people don't like when you age perfume or something, but I'm not aging the perfume. I'm, I'm saying like a woman between 35 and 45 or 50 on a, you know, maybe like a Laguna Beach mom, but like cool. Like she's, you know, she believes in vaccines. Um, yeah. I, I, I like this a lot. I haven't reached for it that much because again, it's kind of West Coast. It's kind of beachy to me. So I just haven't been in that mood. So if I could turn back time, I wouldn't bring this, but I do like it a lot. Um, What else? Okay, I have a bunch of, I ordered a bunch of fragrance oils from Carter and Jane. Um, You know, and I need to, Fragrance oils are hard because you can't really put them on your clothes. They don't have a lot of projection, which I realize I like. When I like a fragrance, I want other people to smell it. So that's been tough. But, um, okay, there's Surfer Girl. I have to give this away, actually. I'm going to bring this to my friends because this has lemongrass, and I can't do lemongrass. It smells like the bathroom to me because I stayed somewhere where they used lemongrass toilet spray or something, and I just ruined it. Island Girl, this is like Frangipani or Plumeria, like it, it's like a Plumeria, I think. This is nice, but this is also not appropriate, like I'm not gonna wear this on the East Coast or in the Midwest. Uh, Beach House. Mm, this is this is something that could be East Coast. This is like, smells like lemony vanilla, salty air breeze, so it's not really tropical to me. That's Beach House. Angelic Clementine, this is, this smells like a, a dream sickle. Actually, smelling a bit off right now, but um, I also have the Body Balm in Angelic Clementine and it's really good, but it's also just a very strong scent. So I don't use the Body Balm all over, I just use it on certain points because it is, it is 
you know, way too much to use it all over your body. It's very heavily fragranced, but yeah, you know, everybody likes to smell like a dream sickle, or I guess maybe most people do. Honeysuckle Reserve. I guess this is honeysuckle, yeah. This smells like a, a you're sticking your nose in a flower. It doesn't feel like me, but I do like the smell. I think I would like it if it were a linen spray or a candle or something. And I believe I had the equestrian. That one I really like. That was like leather and, and, and citrus, I think, but I left it in Chicago because I knew I was gonna be here in the heat. So yeah, there's, I haven't found the Carter and Jane fragrance that is like me, but it was fun to try. I do have Ariana Grande, this is R.E.M. I believe, which I, which I realize is very clever because R.E.M. in French, R.E.M. means Ari loves. Maybe that's why, yeah, this is like cloud, but um, more androgynous. So uh, my friend Ricky actually bought cloud because they were looking for like an androgynous you know, non-gendered sort of fragrance. And they saw in my videos that I liked Cloud, so they bought Cloud. I think, Ricky, you would love REM. This is good, I just, it's been too hot. This is gonna be nice in the fall, daytime, I think, um, like when we're on tour in Boston. But it's just, I have not picked this up, it's too hot. But I really like it, I really like it. Since I don't have Cloud in my collection anymore because I actually finished it, I'm glad to have that. This surprised me. This is a, I wanted to try a pheromone fragrance, which I've read are actually not real. So jokes on me, I guess, but I like it. This is um, Pure Instinct Crave. It looks so cheesy, right? Like this, that font to me is giving me like 90s lubricant, I don't know. But uh, it is a fragrance oil and then this is a, I don't know if I can say this without getting uh, demonetized. It rhymes with Hex. Hex Attractant Perfume Oil. I've worn this many times around my boyfriend. He's complimented it maybe once, but not that much. So I don't know, I don't know if he just doesn't like it. I love it, and that's really all that matters, but I don't think it's doing anything to him. Maybe he doesn't have pheromone receptors, I don't know. Um, Fresh citrus burst with soft rose, sensual jasmine, and a hint of creamy sandalwood, sweet musk, and vanilla. I mean, that's just a crowd-pleasing combination. It's so good. If you like the Juicy Couture fragrances, this smells a lot like, to me, La Vie est Belle. If you like anything like that, if you like uh, YSL Mon Paris, right? That's the one that smells like that even black opium. Like this is just, you know, it, it, it's in that family of those crowd pleasing, mass appealing fragrances, but for good reason. And also, yeah, I maybe I just like it better in the oil form because sometimes I like, this is really a lot like La Vie Belle, but sometimes I think I've sprayed too much of that on me and then I got a headache. This, I just, I love this. It makes me feel hot, so. I got that off of Amazon, I'll link it down below. Uh, I have a couple samples. Valentino born in, uh, Valentino Dona born in Roma, Coral Fantasy. Truly hate this, truly makes me feel unsophisticated, uh, unattractive, <laughs> like I, it's just not my thing. Uh, La Perla, this is the Eau de Parfum. This is good, I've been wearing this lately. I don't think it feels like me, but it's been fun to try. Uh, Maison Francis Kirkjan, Aqua Universalis, Cologne Forte Eau de Parfum. Cologne Forte, I don't know what language because I, that, that seems Latin. This is cool, this is um very different than what I usually wear. I feel like there's juniper in here or vetiver. It's like watery with a really cutting element, but the cutting element, which would be the juniper or the, or the vetiver is like softened by a surface of water. So this is cool. I also had an, uh, a sample that somebody gave me. Um, someone brought it to the stage door in Chicago of Rag and Bone Cypress. That's also really good. Not my usual type of fragrance, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and then what's left is I have a bunch of my Pinrose 
travel fragrances. Uh, we have Merry Maker. This one's nice and bright. I love wearing this one actually in the winter during the day. Um, but it's also good in spring. It, there's, there is a, a really bright cutting sort of element to it without giving me a headache. Um, Lil Dipper is great. By the way, Pinrose has a new um, fragrance quiz that's based on synesthesia. It's not based on, you know, what notes do you like or whatever. It's based on synesthesia questions. What images do you like? What songs do you like? And they will pair you with your perfect fragrance. So not sponsored, but if you want to check them out, I will leave it linked down below and it'll pair you with your perfect fragrance. Uh, mine was Lil Dipper, which is a nice bright floral and it's great for daytime. It's, um, it's fairly clean and cheery. That's really been enjoyable. Sun Saint, love this fragrance. This is, to me, this is like coconut lime sandalwood. I don't know if sandalwood is technically listed, but it smells like um, the younger version of Le Labo Santal. So if you have like, you're buying a gift for someone younger, I mean, I, I wear this, but if you're buying a gift for like a teenager or whatever, Santal is a little heavy to wear to like high school or something. Also, it's so expensive. This is totally school appropriate. This is like also summertime, pool day. I wear this to the pool all the time. I love it. Um, Gilded Fox, I will be wearing this one in the winter because it's chocolate and it's sweet and oh, just delicious. But we gotta wait for winter. And then Wild Child, this is really floral. This one's not my favorite because it is just very floral. Um, I think I could actually probably give this one away. Um, and then I just have these, which are my various Pinrose sets. I have two of the um, best travel perfume sets and they come with these fragrance petals, which you can also order on Pinrose's website, like Sun Saint. Um, it's, a perfume, it's a perfume towelette. So you can wipe yourself down with the perfume, uh, I could take this to the pool, like when I'm going on vacation, I could just take one of these instead of taking any bottles and that is the best. And it's super, super compact, not gonna weigh down your suitcase. Your carry-on, obviously, it's not liquid so you can take it. And then I also have the Pinrose Greatest Hits Kit which I haven't opened yet because I have Secret Genius, Merry Maker, and Wild Child. Secret Genius is my favorite Pinrose fragrance. It's uh, vanilla, caramel, and sandalwood. How could you not love that? But yeah, that is it. Uh, those are the fragrances I've been enjoying this summer and my thoughts on them. For winter, I think I'm gonna try to do a no buy. Um, I don't wanna speak it officially, but I think I'm going to um, try in October to do a beauty clothing fragrance no buy. Um, that obviously, obviously exclude, exclu that obviously excludes PR and things like that, things that are sent to me, but I really want to try to use what I have. I'm not sure what I have at my parents' house that are the fall fragrances I brought with me for tour because the rest of my perfume collection is away in storage in LA, but we will see. I think I'll give myself one fragrance to buy. My boyfriend and I have a plan that when he visits me in Boston, we'll go to a specialty perfume shop and each pick a perfume to wear to, to create those memories that remind us of Boston. So I think I'll buy one there, but I don't know what. Um, he's really into, oh my God, and I died when I smelled this on him. The minute he opened the door, I was like, what is that smell? It was, um, it was one of the BDK fragrances. Because I told him that he needs to go on Lucky Scent and order samples. Because you can order samples of perfumes that are like $400 for five bucks. So I told him to do that and he ordered, I think it might have been Velvet Tonka. It was nuts. Nuts, I'm telling you, I've never smelled, uh, I've never had a reaction like that before in my life. Uh, so I think he's probably gonna go with that one. Anyway, that was my perfume collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, check out Ana Luisa if you are trying to gear up your fragrance and jewelry collection for fall. Check them out.
uh, 10% off with my code down below and I will catch you in my next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Love you so much. Mwah! Bye guys.